So guys, welcome to season eight. Is it gonna be great? Got some big news coming up. Stay tuned. Hello guys and welcome to Dreaming is Possible here with Chesterfield and yes it's season 8 is upon us and um, yeah, we are going to be cricking off, cricking? Kicking, kicking off things against as you'll just see just at the top there against Burnley yes that is our first game in the Premier League and um, I'll get into some fixtures all that sort of stuff in a moment but we have got some huge news now obviously it was a world cup year and who did who won the world cup i'll tell you in a moment but the big news is is that england have departed with jose Mourinho. just in case some of you have missed episodes yes jose Mourinho was the england manager he is no longer the england manager the big news is dun, 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 drum roll please guess who the england manager is Yes, yours truly has been offered the England. I was offered the France job as well, exactly the same time as offered France, and I was offered England. My allegiance, kind of, with England for kind of obvious reasons, but there we go. Yes, I am now joint. Don't worry, I've not like lost Chesterfield, but you'll see just up here in the top. Yeah, I can flip between the two. I click on 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 this one, and I suddenly um, um the England boss, and I can you know look at how things go on um, under the England setup and stuff. Um, it's going to be interesting, and to be honest, there's going to be a lot more like you know um, stuff involved. Will I show you England games and stuff like that? That's down to you guys. Let me know down in the comments if you are going to be interested in in knowing you know how the, the fortunes of the national side get on. I'd like to see like you know what you guys think of that. Um, but yeah, that's that's how things are at the moment. I will leave it just as Chesterfield. That's all you tune in to to, to see. But um, just thought I'd let you know that I am the England boss as well. I will probably show you you know stuff if we get to like you know like the major tournaments stuff like the euros and the world cups and stuff like that as we move forward but um if you just wanted to see maybe a friendly now and again um let me know down in the comments but yeah that is the big news um i am the england boss and um we'll we'll see how things go and uh, yeah it's it's going to be good because i'll be able to not only pick make some of my players and give them obviously better experience at a national level but i can also at the same time look at other players sort of in more depth than just maybe a scout reports and 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 that way i get to like think oh what wouldn't mind signing him or you know what i mean so it's kind of good in that in that respect anyway you're gonna it's gonna be a long episode and um, it always is at the beginning of every every season because obviously we're going to talk about transfers yes we are going to be doing that but first off i just wanted to go into the fixtures we've had friendlies even though it was a world cup year and um, um, we we have got friendlies and stuff like that and as you can see pretty good as as, as it's gone like you know i mean with, with regards to the friendlies all wins um, the uh, and um, yeah, um, you, I suppose you would expect it. You know, the, the games that we're up against, uh, Ipswich, an absolute thrashing nine nil single with Genk with an eight. Um, but yeah, um, there we go. Right, yeah, like I say, Burnley. But then we've got Liverpool. Yeah, in today's episode, we are going to be taking on the, the Premier League holders in today. That's how we've been drawn. Like that's it. Um, we've not had the Champions League draw just yet, so we don't know who we're going to be facing in that. I'm hoping that we get that draw before today's episode ends um but if 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 not like obviously you'll find out in the next one um right transfers in a moment let's show you how the world cup um um panned out so i want to start things from the quarterfinals i'm not going to go back for all the, the the other rounds and stuff like that will be here all day and it's not mainly about like this but as you can see it was, it was, it was brazil versus france in one quarterfinal germany spain mexico argentina italy and the netherlands as you can see this is probably why jose Mourinho got sacked because england got knocked out before reaching the quarterfinals so brazil gets through germany are through argentina and italy so You'd say maybe that the yeah it's the normal sort of like hitters in there um, that you'd maybe expect France maybe possibly I don't know but you know and we are in 2026 now like so that's where we're at uh, as for semi-finals um, it's Italy and Argentina that make it into the final Brazil and Germany get knocked out which may be a bit of a shock yeah a bit of a, um, a shock there but yeah um, no no goals at all from 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 those sides but yeah it ends up being an italy and argentina final that finish with italy winning by the solitary goal and um, that's um how they um, win it uh, does it show you when it was uh, wow wow um, i didn't even know this myself i've not looked myself a 92nd minute penalty 
decides the World Cup final. Wow, how controversial. Well, not necessarily controversial, but wow, what a way to win it right to death. That's like, that's just literally a heartbreak for Argentinians and, and absolute elation for the Italians. They, you can just imagine them now just jumping off their like couches and stuff like you know what i mean off their sofas and just going mental but um wow there we are didn't have any uh, like play we don't think we got we haven't got any italians um no we haven't got any italians like you know what i mean so um at, at the club um at, uh, but there we, are. we haven't got the argentinians either like but there we are right transfers there we go yes we knew about kevin danso and we knew about deo at uh, uh, upamecano we had already spoke about those two guys we'd already made those like him um, those transfers before but we have brought in martin netto i've i've um it was a Part of his like loan, I could buy him for thirty million, and I've like I've gone for it. I've I've I've, I've thought, yeah, I, I think he's fine. He's he's been at the club on loan for for two years. We, we we had him on loan for, and I feel that yeah, he's he's a decent player to have him. And at thirty million, I think is a steal. There's, there are other players in here that you may not necessarily know. There's Luke Richards that I picked up from Nottingham Forest, and you're probably thinking, what's this? Six million and twenty seven million. Why are you spending that much on somebody we don't really know? Well, the, the, the reason being is this um he's only like 18 years of age but look at his stats they are like you know pretty impressive especially 19 finishing for an 18 year old and i'm thinking obviously long term with this one like you know but yeah um he was um just a key player that i've been like looking out for for quite a while not in forest were not prepared to let him go he was only valued at around about three hundred thousand or something like that and um i've managed to put that bid in and that was the only way that we could get it across the line by having future incentives so that will that's when it's all reach up to like that sort of 27 million at the moment he's not going to be you know a first team player and stuff like that he's going to get experience obviously in the under 23s and maybe going out on loans and stuff but for, for 18 and he's already got these kind of stats i was thinking yeah this guy is definitely one for the future um as for um a couple of other players that in here i've brought in um illy i'm gonna have trouble saying this name illy illyovsky that's that's probably our best way of like describing it he is macedonian player because we've already got like our see a reefy and um a, it was a, a reefy basically said sign my like sort of you know my teammate like that, that plays and i'm thinking oh I'll, I'll go and have a look at him see what he's like you know what i mean but it's this darko ilyovsky and i thought well he, i looked at him he he was out of contract, got him on a free, and um, yeah, another player that is, is, is going to be pretty good. 21 years of age, pretty decent stats. But not only that, the reason I think is it was great. Look at all the positions that he can actually play in. So he's an ideal, versatile kind of player. He's like it's sort of like our version of a James Milner kind of like player. Um, and at 21 years of age, and the fact that Arifi knows him and stuff, and I think having two players from the same sort of background country, you know what I mean, origins and stuff like that is always like beneficial helps him and he's, he's, he's got some like really really good stats in and, and the good one is that look at that penalties 19 on penalties um that is right great um to have and finally in cristiano baptista this is a player that i wasn't looking at didn't know anything about i was it was because was i was watching the world cup and stuff like that and it came to portugal and obviously i was interested in portugal um basically because uh, of all the players that we've got at the club that, that were playing and stuff like that and i seen this player that was playing out on the wing and i thought oh who's this guy cristiano baptista you know what i mean i was thinking like um not sure you know i've not heard of him or anything like that why have i not heard of him i mean have you seen have you seen these stats 21 years of age and look at this like you know what i mean he's obviously he's, he's a new gen player like you know and he's he's come through and i'm like this is like insane I've, I've, i can't not buy him do you know what i mean i can't like you know um and they were quite happy to ex ex um, accept 30 million 30 million for this guy he was only on four thousand a week <laughs> obviously he's jumped up to a hundred thousand a week it was the only way that i was able to get it and, and it was like real madrid were in for him barcelona were, were sniffing about they didn't put any bids in i got in like quite quick because i thought like i need to like get him done because if one of those come in he's definitely going to want to go to there but look at these stars I mean, it's just the fact that you can, yeah, you can play out on this right wing, but he can play midfield if I need to, and he could probably play on the left if I really need to as well. What's, I didn't even look. His left is like is weak, so he plays an inside forward coming in off that left side if I needed to, to play him. But it's just, yeah, 
it, mind blowing how, how good he is. Um, really, really looking forward to seeing how um, he does um, for us. There we go. That's players that have come in. As you can see, players that have gone out. And as you can see, like over here, you're probably thinking, whoa, 216. You probably already noticed it. But yeah, while I've been talking, Ben Clay has gone to Liverpool for 100 million. That is what he went for. Like, you know what I mean? They were coming in with silly little bids and then eventually they came in with a massive bid of 100 million. And he was like adamant he wanted to leave. Um, as soon as it came, he was like, I need to talk to the, to Liverpool. Like, please do not stop, you know, get in my way and all that sort of thing. So, and, and for 100 million, yeah, fine. Um, I wasn't going to have a player that was going to be upset because it could cause disruption throughout the like team. So... Yeah, he has gone. Like, you know what I mean? I was expecting some of the big names to go, like, you know, um, and um, he is one of them. We haven't actually finished the transfer window yet. There are two days left to go. Um, and that's why I wanted to just show you guys. Um, so there is a possibility that some other players could like, possibly leave. As you'll also see, Bucci has also left us 55 million to Lazio. He has gone, but we've got like, obviously Danso in, we've got Upa Meccano in. Marcel Tisserand, he's like 33 now. Um, Shanghai came in for him put in a six million pound bid um and like i say at 33 he's you know it was quite for, i was quite happy to accept six million for him so he is another key player that has left as any other key players uh, most of the others are like gone out on loans or like small numbers and stuff no no massive like you know players that have gone uh there's jake lau who was a possibility that was going to bring forward and get into the, like, the main team but then marseille came in with a bid of 44 million so i was like yeah fine i'll take that um just to let you know richard wyatt yeah you are out on a loan you have gone to ajax um um, Tomo, you have um, remained on loan. You have gone um, to Villa. You still, uh, or, or were you at Villarreal? Or hold on, I'm trying to think. Maybe you weren't. Or was it Villarreal that came in? Um, oh, I, I clicked on the wrong thing. Uh, I'm trying to think. If it was you. Were you there or you gone there? Uh, no, you were at Real Zaragoza. It was low. That was it. Yeah. So Villa. Yeah, you've gone to Villarreal this season um, for a loan instead, and um, also Pedro Neto. Um, he has been sold for forty nine million um, to Fiorentina. Um, he's gone. But like I say, I've got this um, Baptista guy now as well um, that can play on that right hand side. Um, so there we go. That's that's the key. I mean, like I say, there are some players you'll see there, like you know what I mean, but most of them are like out on loan or the or they've gone like you know just been let go for like nothing because they're like sort of like like young players that you wouldn't even have like heard of because i don't i don't i'm used to them haven't played them or anything like that sort of thing so but like i say um that is the transfers and stuff we have got 260 odd million um uh, if i you know that's not it uh 260 million in our transfer budget i can't well i can spend it obviously i can spend it the trouble is, is every time I go in try and buy like a top player, the board say they're not going to pay the wages. Even though, if you look at my wages, I can I can afford the wages, no problem. But the board keeps saying we're not going to spend that. We're not going to spend that because I tried to sign Mason Mount, I tried to sign Phil Foden, um, obviously for Ben Clay replacements. You know what I mean? I thought I'll get those two in. Plus they're English, again England manager, and um, I was able to. There was, I think it was 60 odd million they wanted, you know what I mean? Um, but they wanted like 250 to 300,000 pounds a week, which is, is absolutely insane amount of money. And I agree with that, but I can afford it. But they kept saying, we're not spending that amount of money. Um, and it kept like scuppering the, 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 the deal. So I have tried to sign these players, but unfortunately the board keep. I mean, why give me a budget if then they keep turning around and saying we're not allowing you to spend it? It's just absolutely crazy. There are some of the big transfers that have gone. Matthias De Litt has joined Manchester City from Juventus for 140 million. We got um, a guy called Pierre Rosen. Not even heard of this guy. Um, what is he? 26 years of age now. So I'm not sure who he is. Like I'm not. I've not heard of him in real life. You know what I mean? He's gone from Atletico Madrid to. PSG for 112 million. We've got um, Ben Clay, obviously, like left us from Chesterfield to go to Liverpool. Uh, Rodrigo has left uh, Manchester United. He has gone to AC Milan for 90 million. We've got Mason Greenwood, who was at Chelsea. He's joined Real Madrid for 86 million. Obviously, um, Diaz and um, Upamecano has joined us. We've got um, Gabriel uh, Corbo has joined um, Inter Milan from Roma. Yeah, busy clubs here. We've been the, probably the busiest of getting players 
players out of the clubs. 25 people have left, but um, also 16, as you can see, 16 player people have left Arsenal. 14 have left Manchester City there. 12 left Liverpool. Leeds, I think that yeah, I'm just trying to like look across Leeds. I think have left to so quite a lot of people leaving, not that many coming in at Tottenham. Only brought in one player there. Rayan um, Cherky has come in from, from there. We've got here, yeah, we've got uh, Memphis Depay has joined Chelsea um, from um, PSG 56 million. Um, but yeah, they've not made that many um, key signings again. Again, Man City have only brought in just a couple of players, Massey Ice Delit. Um, and Joaquim Matter, um, they've also brought in as well. But um, yeah, they're, they're, that's transfers and stuff, guys. Like I said, I'll move things on and then we'll get into the game against um, Burnley. So the transfer window has now ended. We've had quite a few bids in for Oli Watkins from Chelsea and from um, Arsenal. King Kate coming in. I mean, Chelsea pushed it right up until like 71 million, but he was adamant he didn't want to talk to them. And I'm thinking, well, if he doesn't want to talk to them, then that's a good thing because he wants to stay. And, and play for us and even though it was like you know a great offer for a, a 30 year old um i wasn't prepared to let him go because i think he's been great for us like so um hopefully he doesn't <laughs> i don't live to regret that and he still has a good season for us but um yeah um, ollie watkins was the only key player that was like you know sort of like that was trying to like come in which is great because it means that we keep hold of like the likes of appleby charlie lawrence you know ollie clay which is ben's obviously brother um any other players in there i was trying to think of that was coming in i think there was um no i think that was it alkina as well there was um, a bid that came in from borussia dortmund 54 million for him nah um wasn't going to accept that and he didn't want to leave anyway as well so that's good but as you can see Moise Keane has returned to the Premier League, come back from uh, from Italy. He's come back from N Napoli and joined Chelsea for 82 million. We've got um, uh, Nico or Neko Williams, who was uh, used to be a Liverpool player, but he was at Lyon, um, has now joined Arsenal uh, for 43 million. And um, Anor um, Sigurdsson has uh, joined um, Tottenham from Bournemouth for 40 million. Um, that is probably the, 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 the three sort of key um, players um, in there. But yeah, um, Chelsea were the biggest spenders with a with 112 um, million. But um, as for it's 309 million, it's not that massive amount. Like, you know what I mean? Spent uh, by Premier League clubs. So they're, they're sort of like, you know, keeping hold of the old purse strings there. But yeah, um, there we go. Transfer window has ended. Right, so here are the two lineups, and I'm actually going to go with the actual asymmetric 4-2-3-1 formation, even though we are away from home. They're going with the 4-4-2. Um, I can see they just, they've, they've, got, they've also got, um, signed an uh, Nketiah there, and that's who they've got um, in their lineup. And um, just seeing anyone else that's jumping out really from the sort of Burnley side, Not no no big names really um, coming in there, but we are going with Timo Horn in goal. We've got Cruz, Arifi, Upamakana, you guys are going to get to, to see him. Ollie Clay, we've got Drea as captain. He is remaining as captain. Ollie Clay is actually going to take over the vice captaincy. Like his brother obviously had it last season, so I've decided to, to give it there, keep it in the family and stuff like that. Uh, Martin Neto with Drea in the midfield. Keener ahead of them. Watkins and our new signing, Baptista, out on this right-hand side with Charlie Lawrence is up top. Right, let's see if we get off to a winning start then um, against Burnley. It's always great in it. First opening day of the brand new season is always great. And sun is shining here. And a little bit breezy, as you can see from the weather. But and, and oh, Baptiste has already picked up a, a bruised ankle early on, which is not good to, to see. The ball is played in and Timo Horn takes that from the air, no problem. But um, Baptiste may be getting used to life in the Premier League has like, picked up a bit of a bruised ankle. Hopefully he should be all right with it. And here he is on the ball as he surges forward now. And let's see what he has got in his locker as he still goes and he's gone for a, a bit of an audacious attempt but it was over so free kick played in ollie clay goes to the back stick and the referee has stopped things as we say i think there's a hand it's, it's said there penalty so we have got a penalty early on here it is baptista that's going to step up and he has scored his first goal on his debut wow there we go what a way to you know um, introduce yourself to the away fans and uh, Nicely done. It's played out here from the back. Ollie Clay now just knocks this one inside, finds Dreyer, plays it across here to Arifi. Arifi out to Baptista. He seems to have shrugged off that like initial um, knock to his ankle. It seems to be all right. And Ollie Clay now pushes forward down this left hand side for us. Is he going to be able to get past Chew? Is that? Um, but not able to. 
And Ollie Clay says, no, I want it back. Thank you very much. Uh, plays this inside now. Finds Ollie Watkins now. What can he do? He goes for it. Oh, what a hit. What a hit. And that has just proved why I wanted to keep him at the club and not sell him to Arsenal or Chelsea. Ollie Watkins, what a strike that is. And that has given us a 2-0 result here at Turf Moor. Well, not a result. The scoreline, I should say. But what a hit here. Great, great strike there from Ollie. So we find ourselves at half time and we are well in control of this game as you can see with regard of shots. Possession wise it's even, you know, but um, Burnley not really um, troubling us too much, but it's only 2-0 and that can always be a dangerous scoreline. So second half is underway, cleared out, Baptista's intercepted that, nice little back heel through here to Felipe Cruz, I'm hoping these two can get some kind of partnership, and oh what a hit from Keener, we know he can, he's got that in his locker, he's done it numerous times and that is a hell of a strike and that is already up there as you know contention for, for goal this season, lovely little play down this right hand side for us, Felipe Cruz now just like, just wanders into the mid, midfield area and then Keener first time hit and Mannion in goal there not a prayer of saving that one. A great strike, and that has surely got, got us now three points. A chance for Burnley, though, but intercepted by Cruz. Now plays it back to his keeper. Horn plays this one out, but intercepted again. Gallagher, not the best clearance from Horn. Played through here to Chaloff. Back to Gallagher. Blocked. Sirachi now has to go back inside. Finds Gallagher. Goes all the way over to the side to find Chu. Chu now plays the ball in, set it down, and Unketia has managed to get a goal back here for Burnley, and that was on his debut. So the home fans will be pleased that um, he scored, but obviously they won't be pleased with the scoreline. But hey, you know, they could still get themselves back into this. So Baptista, I, I mean, he, he picked up that knock, didn't he, early on? And as you can see, his fitness is like is, is sort of dropping. So he's had, a, he's, he's had a really good debut, but I am now going to replace him, take him off and bring who do we go for appleby or warner we'll get car warner a run out why not so throw in down in this um, bottom corner here for burnley managing to work the way out of that quite easily we sort of eased off and stuff as galliano has just like been allowed to run through here and there's another chance here and that could have been that could have been a little bit hairy they got that one there but yeah Burnley is starting to get back into this a little bit so I'm just going to take him um, Upamakano off um, he's down to like sort of 70% on his on his like fitness and stuff I'm going to give him um, Kevin Danso a run out why not give him a debut um, uh, and um, see how he does we've not really been troubled too much in defence and um, we've not really seen much of Upamakano anyway and also we're going to bring um, Juan Puerto on who is a player that's been at the club for quite a while now he's been out on loan quite a few times like you know it's back to Portugal and stuff so so going to give him a run out and see how he does um, with the late sort of final sort of 15 minutes to go. So another chance here, like I say, for Burnley as it's played into the box and they have got a goal back and it is going to be a nervy sort of end to this game as they've managed to get another goal here. It's 3-2 now. So after pretty convincing, like, you know, first half and stuff, the second half, we've um, kind of switched off a little bit and Burnley could even get a point from this one, which would be a little bit disappointing. They're just checking here, obviously, for offside, but he was clearly onside. So, throw in now as Felipe Cruz throws it in, finds Cal Warner. Can we finish this game off for good, like in the final sort of five minutes, or are we going to throw things away? It's played over top, Warner gets it down, and Puerto this time, that's much better finishing as he puts it in and gets his first goal of the season. I'm sure he'll be chuffed to bits, as you can see him jumping up and down there. Very chuffed to bits indeed. And that is now, surely, three points. There we go. Four goals to two. A little bit hairy. Shouldn't have been. Um, we shouldn't have let Burnley back into that game. We were in total control of the game in that first half. And really, we were pretty much in total control in the second half. And the fact that they only had three shots on target and two of them hit the back of the net is a bit worrying in that sense. Like, But it was nice to see that we got 19 on target. Um, it should have just been a lot more like comfortable than what it was. Right, here are the two lineups. I'm actually going to stick with the same team apart from one change. Juan Puerto, because he's Scored obviously in the last game. Um, I've just decided to start him and put Charlie on the bench. Um, that is the only difference. Apart from that, it's the same lineup. I thought try and keep a little bit of continuity. They played well, even though we did concede obviously those two like sort of goals, which were 
yeah, um, we'll, we'll work on that. I mean, we're not up to full, like, you know, game match f fitness and sharpness. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, at the first few games of the season, it's never like, you know, you're not, you're not quite there, like, sort of thing. But, yeah, um, just thought I'd stick with the same. As you can see, for, for Liverpool, no no Ben Clay. And I thought, oh, why is that? Like, but he's actually injured. And um, that was the reason. Um, so, yeah, their new £100 million signing from us um, is not going to be playing against his brother. No, he's actually injured. And um, the same goes to Trent Alexander Arnold as well. The reason I know that is because I'm an England manager, so I get like emails now regarding injuries to other players around um, that are English. Like, so I know that those two are injured, and that's why they're not playing. But it's still a very strong side. We are up against one of our former players, though, in Matt Clark. Yeah, um, obviously we saw them a couple of seasons ago to Liverpool. He is still doing pretty well, and he's alongside Davinson Sanchez, once of obviously of Tottenham. But um, Van Dijk is not alongside him. I didn't actually check on whether he was injured or not. Um, well, um, there we are. Um, yeah, it's going to be. Oh, there's no Mbappe either. Just noticed that. Yeah, there's no Mbappe. Maybe he's. Have they got like a, a much massive injury problem? But yeah, there's no Mbappe. I've just seen that. Like, but yeah, so maybe we could get a result here because he is like the thorn in our side. He always scores against us, doesn't he? But um, fingers crossed. Um, we can get a result here. We are at home. Let's see if we can make it two wins out of two. So we are the um, 12 o'clock kickoff, so we get off before all the other teams do. And there's a chance as a reef, he just heads it onto the top of the bar there. The rain is coming down, though, for this one. And um, it looks like the rain will continue right through the game. Will that have, like, any bearing on it? I'm not sure, as Liverpool play this one forward to Lainez now as he searches into the box and hits it straight at the horn, luckily for us. Cruz with the throw-in, finds Baptista, but dispossessed there by Reina. Played it forward. Can we get there? We can. Arifi's there, being challenged. Played down the line. Cruz now under a bit of pressure. It looks like Liverpool, that's what they're going to be playing. Baptista now. Oh, Cruz wasn't expecting that one. We've given the ball away and a chance now for Liverpool as Lainez um, is under pressure and we are trying to win that ball back, but he's got good feet and he's managed to keep all of it. Dance has now plays this one out here. Andy Robertson has surged past Cruz. He hits it initially and, oh my God, this is bouncing around. Good save initially from Horn, but that could have been 1-0. So Ollie Watkins has an injury. I'm going to see. I'm going to change him at half time. But he's done well to like play to to this length of time. But um, I will take him off at half time. We've gone all the way back here to Timo Horn. Because like Liverpool uh, are definitely not letting us have enough time on the ball. They are pressuring us on every occasion. But there's a chance here. Baptista has done really well, and he has scored a great goal right on half time. Well, this guy is looking like he is a, a fantastic signing for us. I can't believe that I was able to like um, notice him and. Um, I can't believe no one else actually did notice him and we managed to pick him up and um, yeah um, completely I don't know what happened to Alisson but yeah, he was wrong footed or whatever but we go into half time leading by a goal to nil against um, sort of like our arch nemesis aren't they like you know um, but yeah this is this is great so far but if you remember last season we scored first they beat us 4-1 <laughs> so let's see how this second half will um, pan out as Andy Robertson throws it here to Declan Rice, back to Matt Clark, plays it inside, finds Dantas now. Dantas lays it across, his chance for me, shoot, he's pushed forward, Cottrell's there, and he's hit the post, and then cleared away for a corner from Cruz, but oh, that, I mean, Liverpool should be leading, to be honest, they had enough chances in that first half, and they've just like, hit the post now. They played this one out to the um, different one, they played it out to the edge of the box here, Lainez, now Dantas, but he's hit it at home, but home couldn't keep up, I don't know if it's the, it's the rain or whatever, but he just didn't keep Keep hold of it. He needs to get himself a better pair of gloves if that's the case. Dantas now in from the and whew, we managed to get a clearance on it. It's going to come to Cottrell, is it? And we're not able to get away. Liverpool just got us penned in at the moment. I'm loving Baptista. He looks he looks a find, an absolute find. Cruz now, Baptista with the header. He is becoming our hero right now. Neto. Played across, finds Ollie Clay, goes for it. Oh, what a hit! What a hit against his brother's new team. Yes, like Ollie Clay hits a 
peach of a goal and Allison is wrong footed again or he's just like flat footed but Cruz here plays it across Martin Neto sees Oli Clay in, in space and he just brings it down and what a strike and again we've put um, Alison Becker on his knees yet again and that is 2-0 and we are looking good guys I can't believe we, it's probably the best time to play Liverpool because obviously they're not going to be up to you know their full like fitness and like in a match fitness and stuff so this is probably the best time to play them and that could have been three as Baptista nearly gets in Ollie Clay now with this one plays it in. There's a chance of maybe again. It's coming here to Keener. Tries to get it back into the box. He's going to try and hold on to this. It's Domingos Keener. Plays it across but can't find anyone. It's coming away. And we've got Liverpool on the ropes now. They're like not able to push out as much because they know that they could get caught. Charlie Lawrence is in a chance. Is he going to finish this time? No. Hits it straight at Allison. Oh, Charlie's had two great opportunities to get a goal here. Cruz now plays this one in, and Upa Meccano has scored his first goal. Wow, that's why, and, uh, well, one of the, did he just do some weird leg, what the hell had happened to his legs then? I don't, that was weird. Is there anyone else, oh, you'll see it maybe, but it was a weird celebration. What a header. One of the reasons why he's brought in, will you see it here? He don't, oh, we don't see it there. He don't, I'm sure he done something weird with his legs then. But um, anyway, um, we are leading 3-0. Wow, this is just a, uh, such a, a great performance from us right now. Some of our like you know key new signings are making a, a huge difference. But chance to Liverpool and Cottrell's in, and they've pulled one back, and there is time for them to to get back into this league, you know. So we need to be careful. Great um, chance. Brewster has come on for them. He plays it inside. Dantas now. Um, great ball over the top, and he's just completely um, found Cottrell. And yeah. Um, good finish to be honest from from him and it's he's english so I'm, i can watch him and think yeah good we can maybe get him called up for the england side um that was a poor ball in becker is able to able to just grab that one no problem played out here here's cotterell again i think i will like call him up for england because he is yeah he is definitely causing us problems um but then saying that we've got Raheem Sterling, we've got Jaden Sancho, and um, players like that. I'm talking as an England manager, obviously, not not as a as a Chesterfield manager. I mean, if we had like Sterling and Sancho at Chesterfield, that'd be like wow, that'd be mad. But we've got Baptista, haven't we? But here, um, talking of that, we've got Cotterell now for for Liverpool, and that's a oh, it's come to Ross Matthews um, after we we slid in, and I, I was thinking, oh, that's dangerous because it could be a penalty. We did actually get the ball here, but unfortunately, it has fallen perfectly. As you see here, uh, two challenges come in, um, and it falls perfectly to Ross Matthews, and it's 3-2, and we're into the final minute, um, but I've got this feeling Liverpool could just get it. No, they can't. We get the win. Um, I can't believe I'm celebrating against my team, but yeah, you know what I mean? It's it's uh, it's, it's only a computer game, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? But as you look, at how, look how close. Look at this. 21 shots, 22. 11 on target, 12 on target. 54%, 46. I mean, yeah, a draw you'd, you'd say would probably have been the right result when you look at like the stats and stuff. But it doesn't. You don't. You don't play to stats, do you? I mean, like, look how many games we've scored or not scored. Had like you know 30 odd shots, and when he's managed to get one goal or something, it's just it's mad. But we've got three points anyway, guys. I'll catch you on the next episode, and um, thank you as always for tuning tuning in. We don't get to find out, unfortunately, who our Champions League um, group is um, in this episode. It hasn't been drawn yet. They're still playing like the qualifier bits, but you'll get to find out in the next episode, I'm sure, um, and that it will be drawn for that. In fact. Um, it'll probably be a champions league match in the next episode yeah i probably that in palace or brighton maybe i think we'll definitely yeah it'll probably be a champions league game um tune in to find out who that's going to be thank you so much as always i think i've already said that but one of them and um, i'll catch you next time dave from Mumunga gaming signing off cheers <laughs>